Taking a look at some of our business stories this morning, the country's economy has grown faster than expected. I think that was a sigh of relief for all of us yesterday when Stats SA released the latest GDP figures for the second quarter of 2023. Now, it shows that the economy expanded by 0.6%. Uh, manufacturing, agriculture and mining drove that growth despite the challenges of persistent power cuts. Now, for some reaction, we are joined this morning by Lum Kile Mondi from the Witz School of Economics. A very good morning to you, uh, Tatulondi. Thank you for your time today. 0.6%, it is still low, but certainly much higher than what uh, the Reserve Bank had actually projected. They had projected 0.4%, while some analysts were saying that 0.1% uh, is where we should be looking at for, for the growth. Where can we attribute uh, this growth? Well, we're all surprised that suddenly there was a huge demand uh, in the manufacturing sector, specifically um, the metal products, the machinery and equipment, which are very critical uh, for our economy, given that that sector has got linkages to mining, and hence mining also performing very, very well. And of course, our export, because uh, that's linked also to the automotive sector. As you know, we export quite a lot uh, to, uh, to international markets. So those uh, were very, very important for us, despite the energy crisis, because manufacturing, as we know, is quite energy intensive. What was more important also was the rebound of agriculture after two quarters of slow growth, which really means that there is something in this economy However, we're worried about the sustainability, as we've heard from many uh, CEOs in the past few weeks, as results were coming out, specifically in the mining sector, both numbers are saying were from Exaro, and yesterday we had uh, Mr. Mutsipe uh, from African River Minerals also talking about economic constraint in relation to logistics uh, due to the fact that many of our miners cannot be able to, to mine and export the products uh, given the failing and falling infrastructure, not only on the energy side as well in stage six, but also on the export, uh, on the export side, both rail and ports collapsing due to poor management. You, you mentioned manufacturing uh, that expanded by 2.2 percent. You also mentioned minerals and that they were quite a big contributor to uh, that particular sector. But what other products within the manufacturing uh, sector were actually responsible for this 2.2 percent hike? Uh, very importantly, uh, the, the automotive sector, as you know, governments uh, spend quite a lot of money in terms of our uh, industrial policy and our uh, motor industry to run plan. Um, and the motor industry uh, is linked, as a lot of us are aware, that although although some of the parts are assembled here, there's quite a lot of other parts that come domestically, such as seeds and many other products, which come from different subsectors of manufacturing, including rubber. Um, so those were critical. What is more important, we must remember that the backward and forward linkages of the motor sector uh, and the employment uh, capability of those subsectors are quite pivotal in an economy with just over 33% unemployment. And therefore, we need them growing at a faster rate. However, as I've said um, uh, this morning, is that we're worried about sustainability uh, given the power inefficiencies, but also uh, the logistic inefficiencies. So really, it's something that we must be happy about, but be very concerned about sustainability, because it doesn't appear to us that government has got a plan to re resolve this. Uh, after reading last week that uh, government is talking about cutting expenditure, because they're worried about revenue collection, and therefore uh, the debt spiraling beyond what we planned in terms of the Minister of Finance budgetary uh, plan. So these are the issues of concern for South Africa, is the sustainability of this growth. And the fact that it doesn't seem to be to us that we're able to deal with many of the challenges. Remember, the energy crisis has been with for many, many years, and nothing has come out of it. Now the, the, now the logistic plan, we all talk, uh, nothing is coming out of it. So until really we see uh, our government, who owns quite a lot of these uh, infrastructure uh, companies, 
uh, they, they start talking about bringing private sector because they simply cannot do it. Uh, bring in private sector and bring private sector, let's get the economy going because our biggest challenge is the uh, rising unemployment, the widening inequality and the, and, and, the, and the declining tax base, which is likely going to make uh, our capability of going beyond 1% a big challenge. What was quite a surprise, uh, Lumkile, is the sharp decline from the, the transport, storage and communications. They had experienced an 18-month incline. So seeing a decline by 1.9% uh, was quite a bit of a, a surprise. What are the factors that have led to this? So, I mean, th that one we should not be surprised because uh, on the transport sector, we know that, uh, I mean, numbers at Sengwa from Exaro talked at length uh, over three weeks ago as to the problems around coal. That is, when prices were very good, which would have been good for Exaro, but also good for us as an economy, given the tax benefits, that really the, the collapse of that uh, uh, export corridor uh, uh, brought a lot of challenges. Remember that the, the opportunity cost of, of the of the transport sector reverberates across other sectors because suddenly some employment opportunities that could be created on the corridor decline. Therefore, the demand for other goods, whether it's telecoms and others, uh, go down. So the telecom sector is also a victim uh, of the financial environment that we're in. We all know that people were laying off workers from employment. Secondly, uh, we've got uh, unreliability of telecom services because of continuous power cuts as well as crime. So many of the telecom uh, companies are, are weighing down uh, on whether to invest more in infrastructure given the challenges around both companies who are retrenching, but also the other side of the market. Uh, where workers or owner citizens are finding very, very difficult in terms of buying new, uh, new, uh, new telecom uh, bundles or even um, new telecom uh, gadget. But more importantly, all these things uh, talk to us uh, to the falling capability of the South African economy, where both infrastructure and the rule of law is collapsing. Because we all know that many of these companies, the infrastructure gets ready, if they don't have security, then uh, the whole uh, uh, segment of that supply uh, of telecom services does not get service. So it's a loss of the equipment, but loss of the bundles that could be earning a parallel telecoms company revenue. So it's all a mixture of really uh, of an economy under a lot of stress, not only because consumers being uh, overstretched because of high cost of living, but also because of failing, inf failing infrastructure because of crime, but more importantly also of just a willing unwillingness of government to take decisive action to deal with some of these problems that South Africa faces. There were four major sectors that really contributed to uh, the downward spiral, two of them being finance and, and the other construction. Uh, talk to us about what this means, because both of them are quite key. Construction, as we know, is pivotal. Uh, construction uh, indicates to us that there is confidence in the long-term economic development of South Africa. Therefore, people are investing uh, on new uh, build programs, be it private, be it commercial. Therefore, there's a decline of about 0.4%. More importantly, it tends to construction to employ quite a lot of workers who are, are semi-skilled, um, uh, semi-skilled, therefore absorbing huge numbers of people into the construction site. Um, and also, construction itself, uh, the build, is linked to all sectors, from wood, uh, from aluminium, steel, uh, from the glass industry. So it's quite a very uh, um, attractive um, sector in terms of it backward and forward linkages and how it drives other sectors when it's growing. On the trade, catering accommodation, uh, we all know that it's also extremely uh, labor intensive. Um, and it's to, to do with the logistics that, you know, when the tra transport and, uh, and transport sector is not doing as well as you want to do, that even the cost uh, of airlines, given that the competition in that sector has been decimated due to mismanagement, but also due to the COVID lockdowns, it means that 
uh, there's much uh, taking place as far as domestic uh, trade is concerned, but also, of course, as we've discussed, the international trade, which is a victim of transnet uh, rail infra efficiencies and port efficiencies. But also, we see that um, uh, the, the lack of that movement of people in domestically to travel means that the Cape Town and Commission that's going to suffer. We all know that uh, the, the, the Cape Town province, specifically the Cape Town city, around those key areas is doing very, very well because of the foreign uh, influx. As we've seen, the numbers of arrivals uh, at the Cape Town airport uh, seem to be increasing and a very positive sign for, for Cape Town alone. But Cape and, Town and is actually a minuscule bigger problem. And, and we'll leave it at that uh, for this morning, uh, Lumkile Mondi. Thank you so much uh, as we summarize uh, what those GDP numbers actually mean.